Woman Chica, welcome from Melbourne, Australia, to part nine of our series of Mark's Gospel as we follow Jesus and his adventures on the road with his disciples. I'm Stephen Barrington or Barrow from the Melbourne chapter of God Squad, and today we will continue our series with a pa with a passage from Mark chapter two, verses thirteen to seventeen, the call of Levi. We reminded that Mark's gospel was written to a group of Christians about discipleship, about what it means to follow Jesus. The fear was that they were beginning to lose their way. According to Mark, there can only be two possible ways of responding to Jesus' call. That is, following him or rejection. You either stand with those who are seeking to follow Jesus, or you join with those who are taking their stand against him. There could be no sitting on the fence, no being lukewarm here. The stories in Mark's Gospel are shaped around encouraging the original readers and us today to follow Jesus and his priorities. Last week we heard from Sean about Jesus healing a paralysed man and the chapter continues with today's reading. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to see him and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. Sean last week reminded us that the term the crowd is mentioned 38 times as not and does not just refer to a mass of people, but refers to the commoners, the people of the land, the lower class, the uneducated, the anonymous, the forgotten people. These are the ones who Jesus directed the majority of his ministry to as he and his disciples journeyed through the Galilean countryside. And over the last 50 plus years, that has been the call for those of us in God Squad, the call to the margins as we follow Jesus. So today I want to share three short reflections from this story for us to think about. The first one is that it begins with Jesus. He is central and Jesus is on the move. He's the one who takes the initiative. And we contrast this to the other religious leaders and rabbis of the time. Because Jesus, like many, was a religious leader, was a teacher. He was seen as a rabbi. But unlike the rest of them, Jesus chose his disciples, chose his students very differently. For other rabbis, people would apply to them. They would present their CV, go for a job interview, make sure that they were right from the family, right from the right family backgrounds, came from right, the right class of people before they were considered worthy to be a rabbi, a disciple under that rabbi. Yet it's done very differently with Jesus. And we see in this story that Jesus comes to them. Jesus comes to Levi and, uh, and invites him to follow him. For the other religious leaders, we're told that uh, we could tell who the students were because they walked a respectful three steps behind their leader. But we don't see that with Jesus. We see that he journeyed together with his disciples. And many, we have many recorded conversations of their journeys on the road together as they walked. The rabbi was also had suitable pious practices that he, that he had that would keep him apart from his disciples. Yet we have the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet to show what true servanthood is. So Jesus here and throughout his life is constantly reversing normal practices. It's a typical gospel pattern, and some call it the upside down kingdom, where the first shall be last, the last shall be first. And there's many, many stories and examples of that throughout the gospels. And if you uh, want to look further, look no further than the Beatitudes. It's a good reminder that it's not about us. We need to remember that Jesus is central to the story and our story. It does not begin with us. And throughout our 50 years of God Squad, we've attempted to keep Jesus central. We don't always get it right, but we only exist because of Jesus. As we celebrated our 50th anniversary recently, we reminded that it is about God's faithfulness and keeping him central, not anything that we have done ourselves. So for us in God Squad, it's about following Jesus and taking the initiative within our community seeking out those especially who fall between the cracks within society and the bike scene. It begins with Jesus. Secondly, the invitation is an invitation or an act of grace. The call comes in the everyday of life. In the previous chapters, 
Jesus comes to others in, the, in their everyday life. Two of them were fishing and two were um, overhauling or fixing their nets. In this story today, Levi is not in the temple praying to God for guidance, but here he was collecting taxes when Jesus comes to him. Probably as about as unspiritual as you can get. And of course, tax collecting at the time uh, of Jesus' time was very different for us today because we we reminded that uh, that Jesus and his countrymen were under Roman rule. And so Levi collecting taxes was collecting taxes as a Jewish person from Jewish people on behalf of the Romans, on behalf of the oppressors. So he would be seen as being very unpatriotic and not a popular person at all. So when I think about if I was given the task of uh, picking my 12th you know, hit team to change the world, who would I choose? And, uh, and a Roman sympathizer, a Roman tax collector, someone who collected taxes on behalf of the Romans would not be someone I would choose. But Jesus has other ideas. And remember, he's 12 people that he picked changed the world. And we see this repeated throughout history. God brings together a bunch of misfits from a variety of different backgrounds. And that's the great thing about the body of Christ in action. We see this with God's squad in that we come together from different backgrounds, different cultures, different perspectives, different theological and church traditions. And humanly speaking, it shouldn't work. Yet God calls us together in a common mission to learn from each other under him. In our best moments, we see Jesus in each other and we complement each other as we follow and serve him. In today's story, Jesus didn't wait until Levi was ready or had jumped through the right religious hoops like the religious leaders of the day wanted. The call of Levi is the call of grace, that the God of the universe comes to us in our everyday broken, selfish lives and invites us to partner with him. He doesn't wait for us to be good, good Christians or he'd be waiting forever. With God's squad, we wear a badge that says, Jesus Christ, friend of the outcast. It's the call of who we are as followers of Jesus. Being a friend implies trust and relationship. And Jesus invites us to offer this grace to others, for us to accept and include those who especially don't fit in, those constantly rejected and is despised by others, those who feel anonymous and forgotten. It's very fortunate where I work each week with Foothills, I have the opportunity to sit down and share meals with people who feel forgotten who feel like they've been left out, for people dealing with a range of challenges such as homelessness, poverty, family violence, isolation and addictions. And in sitting down with them and sharing a meal together, we meet Jesus and I meet Jesus through them. This is grace in action. And thirdly, what does this call involve? While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's place, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his, his disciples. For there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law who were, who were Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with sinners and tax collectors? Jesus goes to Levi's house for a party to share food. Sharing food in the culture of the day and today still is a real test of friendship. Who do we hang out with? Who do we go out for a coffee or a beer with? Who do we invite into our homes for a meal? My mum used to say, you can tell a lot about a person by the company they keep. She used to say that especially when she didn't like the company I kept. And you know, she's right. You can tell a lot about Jesus' priorities by the company he kept. You see, Jesus wasn't concerned about his reputation. That's one of the things I love about Jesus. He was more interested in people than being legalistic or being seen to be right. He's led by love and compassion. This was not a one-off, but a deliberate pattern of Jesus. As we said before, he reverses the normal order of the day and it leads him into more and more conflict with the religious elite of the day. In fact, throughout the Gospels, there are more than 20 occasions where Jesus had conflict with the religious elite. And we'll see this over and over again as we go on through Mark's Gospel. He touches the sick and makes himself unclean according to the strict laws. He heals on the Sabbath, again defying strict laws, but he's motivated by love and compassion, not by keeping unjust legalistic rules, which are designed by those in power to keep the social status of those who are in and those who are out. 
he celebrates with those who don't feel they fit into the religious society of the day. As Jesus said, these are the ones who feel their need for God the most. It is often those who feel that they've made it, the self-reliant, those who trust in themselves and their own own resources, who Jesus is having a go at here. In thinking about that, I wonder how often we get it wrong, that we are more like the Pharisees, more concerned with what other people will think about us. The Pharisees have a go at Jesus because he embarrasses them and their legalistic rules about who is in and who is out. They are led by legalism, not love, grace and compassion. I wonder how often we like to hang out with people who are just like us, who reinforce our own perspective rather than be challenged and be stretched. We live in a world today who constantly tries to divide people along the lines of us and them through fear and through power. Jesus smashes this way of thinking by constantly welcoming the wrong people. Do we, like Jesus, invite the outsiders, the last, the least and the lost? Who do we hang out with? Jesus welcomes the stranger, the outsider, the sinner, the tax collector and get his reputation trashed because of it. The passage concludes, When he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what these means, what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. It is the sick who need the doctor, not the healthy. Right through his ministry, Jesus locks horns with the Pharisees, partly because he's not in their club. He's in embarrassment. He socialises with the wrong crowd and he treats people with dignity and respect. He was accused of hanging out with the unclean of society. He was more interested in the inside, not the outside appearance. He was coming into contact with the outsiders, the sinners, the wrong crowd. But instead of them, them making Jesus unclean, Jesus, in fact, made them whole. And that's our challenge if we call ourselves followers of Jesus. Do we see and treat people the way that Jesus did? especially to those on the margins? Or are we like the Pharisees? Do we hang on to power, control and legalism? Thanks for tuning in this week. I hope it's been an encouragement to you. In the following passage that we will see next week, Jesus again runs into conflict with the Pharisees as they question him and his disciples about fasting. So today, may we be filled with love and compassion from Jesus to receive his grace and share it with those around us as we welcome the stranger and the outsider. For we are again reminded that Jesus came to comfort the disturbed and to disturb the comfortable. May we continue to follow him today. Take care and amen.